So if we've got to add their components, then that means we've got to know their components. The examples that we're going to do right here, we've got the components. When we get to the application problems, we're going to have to break it down into its components just like we did in the previous example, um, or in example one, excuse me. Okay, but here we're given the components. So let's find the magnitude and direction of the resultant, that's what they, the results, okay, the resulting vector. Okay, I'm going to call this one vector 1, and I'm going to call this one vector 2. So the resultant is equal to vector 1 plus vector 2. To add them together, all we do is add their x and y components. Okay, so 9 plus negative 18 negative 12 plus 6. So we get negative 9, negative 6 as the resultant. What quadrant is that resultant vector in? The third, because it's negative x, negative y, that is quadrant 3. You need to identify that every single time because it's going to have an influence when you find the direction. Okay. Now, it didn't just want the components of the resultant. It wanted the magnitude and the direction. So let's find the magnitude of the resultant. I'm just going to call it vector r since it's the resultant. Okay. That is equal to the square root of negative 9 squared plus negative 6 squared, which is 81 plus 36, which is 117. And if we get a decimal for that... It's approximately 10.817. Okay, that's the magnitude of the resultant vector. We also need the direction. So theta is equal to the inverse tangent of the y over the x. So that says theta is 33.69 degrees. Is that in the third quadrant? Nope. It's a reference angle. In the third quadrant, we add 180 to our reference angle. Oh, that didn't work because I left off the zero. 213. The magnitude is 10.817. The angle is 213.69. Let's do one more like that. Okay, negative 15, negative 1, that's in the third quadrant. 12, 16, that's in the first quadrant. Where do you think the resultant vector is going to be? Second, maybe, we'll find out. Okay, uh, R is equal to negative 15 plus 12, negative 1 plus 16, which is negative 3, positive 15. Y'all were right, it is in the second quadrant. We need the magnitude, negative 3 squared plus 15 squared, that's 9 plus whatever 15 squared is, is that 225? I think it is, yeah. So it's the square root of 234, which is approximately 15.5. Is our magnitude. Our angle theta is the inverse tangent of 15 over negative 3. Negative 78 
1.69 degrees. Is that in the third quadrant? Or excuse me, second quadrant. It should be in the second. That is not in the second. That is in the fourth. Okay? So what we're looking at is 78.69 right here. Okay? That's a reference angle. We just need to stick that over here in the second quadrant. So how can we figure out what the measure of the angle from the positive x-axis is? 180 minus 78. It's already negative, so guess what? We can just add 180 to that. So our angle is 101.31 degrees. Always, always, always make sure that your angle is in the correct quadrant. That's what most people make a mistake with. They don't put the angle in the correct quadrant. So when you're going down the road, your speed isn't taking into your consideration whether you're moving north or south or east or west or forwards or backwards. It's just your speed. Um, velocity gets more specific about it. So... Um, let's find the component form of the velocity of this DC-10 jet aircraft. It is flying north 65 degrees east at 500 miles per hour. So you definitely need to draw these. Okay? You definitely need to draw these problems. Um, north 65 degrees towards east. Here's the 65. You start at the north, you go 65 degrees towards east and it's 500, okay? Now, when we find the component form, where are our angles measured from? Where should our angles always be measured from? The positive x-axis. Is 65 degrees measured from the positive x-axis? No, that is relative to the positive y-axis. So, what is the angle right here with the x-axis? 25 degrees, okay? So when we find our component form, the x component is the magnitude, the speed, times the cosine of the angle. Okay, 500 cosine of 25, 453.154. The y, or the uh, vertical component, is 500 sine of 25 degrees, which is approximately 211.309. It makes sense that the horizontal component is greater than the vertical component because of this angle. Okay, It's closer to the horizontal than it is to the vertical, so it doesn't have much of a vertical, or it doesn't have as much of a vertical component. Um, this did say find the component form, so we should write it this way. This is actually part of how they figure out how to fly on a certain line. Okay, um, if they want to point their their plane in a certain direction. Um, the steering mechanism actually has to do with different forces being exerted in different directions. Um, so there is some math to flight and things like that. Okay? Um, all right, so what I want you to do